Welcome back students to part B of our lab one video. As you recall, we were discussing number one, we were doing number one. And we are at the point where we have updated our small table we created, NYCDF. And, there, uh, uh, and the reason we created this small table is because we're going to convert this to a dictionary that we can then use to update our massive table with the party affiliations, with the party affiliations. All right, so here now, we have updated all the Democrats. We have updated the Greens, the Libertarians, Independents, they're one of each in, that, in those situations. Now we want to do the Republicans, okay? Now notice everybody here, my eyes kind of small for you guys to see, but if, you, if you're following along, you can see that at this point um, <laughs> in your console, the small table, which is NYCDF, all that's left is the Republicans, and all the Republicans have a value of NAN. That's basically no in Pandas, right? That's no in Pandas. So rather than write like I did in line 74 of my code here, rather than write all the indexes and use the LOC function to update the party affiliations, what if I can just say, hey, you know what? Wherever there's a no in that column, give it the value Republican. That is what we do here. Well, that is what we do here in slide 23 in line 4. What we're doing is I showed you guys before how you can check to see if there is a no value in the column, right? So that is what we want to do before. Let's set it up how we would want the code to look, all right? So firstly, we want this to be Republican. This is fine. And over here, this is what's going to change, okay? The column is it's still going to be the column value that's updated to be Republican. But here now, to the left of the comma, we want somehow to identify all the rows in the party column, right? that are null and then therefore are null and then therefore those values in that party column will be changed to republican from null to republican we are now going to make use of previously the slides of the slides before and actually in part a of our video how i said hey we can identify for each row all the nulls right just as a reminder if i do nyc df dot is null, right? It literally is going to give me, it shows me all the values uh, that are, first of all, it basically, in this situation, it's not going to give me all the nulls, but what it does do is it identifies all the values that are null. So if it's false, it's not null. If it's true, it's null. A lot of truths there, right? A lot of truths. Now, here is now something that's going to be different for you guys. Okay, that's fine. But how is converting these values in the party column to true and false going to help me identify all the nulls? Are you basically saying, hey, I'm going to basically say, hey, if is no is true, then select the rows. Yes, that's basically the logic, right? So basically the logic here is if I can say place this directly in here, Okay, now this is different. You've never done this before. Now what's happening here is to the left of the comma, it's basically testing to see, it's basically testing to see every value in the, hold on, sorry. I jumped the gun slightly over here. Let's undo this. All right. So here it's doing it for the whole table. <laughs> I apologize. It's doing it for the whole table. We just want to do it for the party column. So I will here now add party, right? Run that again, and now we just have it for that one column. Before it, when you do it, when you do it, when you do the whole table dot is no, it's going to check my ABI students every cell value to see if it's null or not. Okay. So here now we're basically seeing just for the party column. All right, just for the party column. Now this I'm going to copy or directly in here to the left of the comma. 
how does this translate into index values? Because look, here's LOC, right? How does this right here transfer into a list of index values? Very simple. You see, now what we're doing is we're doing logical. We're doing filter via logic. Here we did filter via indexes. And if we were doing iLock, we, uh, we would do filtering via positions. But here now we're doing filter versus logic. That's a two-step process. The first step process is, is calculating the logic. Well, we got the logic. You see it right here on your screen. You can, so I apologize again, you guys can't see it in the video, but if you're following along with the data set, you'll see it. Right, false, false, true, true, false, false. What ends up happening here is that if you convert anything into a logic into a logic of true and falses, right? If you, in this case, we're, we're based, we're literally creating a column of true and falses, right? This is what this is doing. What's highlighted here is creating a column of true and falses. So when you create something into a, a column of true and falses to the left of the comma, what happened? And you put place that to the left of the comma within the LOC function, right? Right here. What ends up happening here is, sorry, what ends up happening here is that LOC will automatically grab the index value for every true. That's what's happening. So see here in line 74, we explicitly put in the index values for all the Democratic nominees, right? Now what you can do is, and this is a little trick within LOC, a very powerful trick within LOC, right? We can put a, some sort of logical check in that same region to the left of the comma, right? That gives, that delivers either true or falses, must be either true or falses, right? And automatically, 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 LOC will simply take all the index values for all the true. So over here, for example, it'll take two. It'll convert this into the values two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 14, 15, et cetera, et cetera it will not take the index values of the falses. And so when I execute this line right here, okay, and now view the table, ladies and gentlemen, everywhere where there was a true, Republican has been placed. You see that? Everywhere where there was a true, the Republican uh, name has been placed. That is what we call logical filtering or logical or, and subsequently logical logical updating, right? We're using logic to update the table or change values in the table. And so this, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're finally done with this part of answering number one. I'm sorry, number one is a little doozy, but uh, it's all data wrangling problems, all data, data wrangling uh, situations are kind of uh, a little intense. But anyway, right? Nothing you guys can't handle. So at this point, I have my little subtable. And I will come back to this, right? I'll come back to this and convert it into a dictionary. Then we'll update the, update the whole table. I just want to go now and go back to the slides because I promised you I was going to get to this point two different ways, right? Two different ways. So here now, let me slide over, slide on over here. So here now, as you can see, let's go back. Now let's look at the way I did it in the slide. So I'm at this point now where I have a, I have a small table with the unique candidate names and their party affiliations, right? As you guys can see that right there. Now, I got it, I got to that point a different way in the slides. And really, the only thing that was different here was um, lines one, four, and yes, and five as well. And I'll, I'll explain that as well. So I'll do that as well. I'll do another parallel table along with you guys. So what's happening here is, I'm going to remember my value counts function. Let's do that again. Second way, according to slides. And I do this because I, I just want to show you guys, you know, as many features as possible, all the basic features as possible, so you can get comfortable with this. So here. Sorry, my screen blacked out for a little bit there. My screen is blacked out.